Okay, this is the final missing link in quantum dot solar cell, which is the electron injection efficiency from the quantum dots to metal oxide semiconductor. Uh, okay. So last week we have learned how we could fabricate the quantum dots, the layer of quantum dots onto the surface of metal oxide semiconductor. So after we have managed to um, fabricate a layer, so it's time for us to study the ability of the excited state electron to be injected from the quantum dots to metal oxide semiconductor. We could just simply use our photoluminescence device. So how do we do that? So we have these quantum dots. I believe I've explained this in diacetyl solar cell, the same principle. Uh, instead of using dye, we will use the quantum dots. This is a typical example of CDSE quantum dots, CDSE 13. So we have the homo and lumo energy level, right? Like this. So we expose the quantum dot, the bare quantum dot, bare, not the quantum dots M, uh, MOS conjugate. So we expose the quantum dot to the light with sufficient energy and the electron will be excited to lumo. So what will happen is that because we only have bare dye, this electron cannot be injected anywhere. And the fate of this electron, it will be recombined with a pole again. So during the recombination, we could study the photon, which is emitted during the recombination. This is uh, radiative recombination. Radiative. When radiative, it means that it will emit photon with certain wavelength. And this photon, the energy of this photon will be lower than the energy of this photon. Photon out, the energy of photon out will be less, will be lesser than the energy of photon in. So this one could be detected by the PL. And this photon could be detected by UVBs or absorption spectrometer. Now this is different chapter. Uh, the photon out will be detected by the PL and graph will be produced. For example, like this. We have the x-axis in the wavelength, the y-axis is the photoluminescence intensity. <coughs> now we have to refer to the peak of the graph. And we slide down the peak and we got the wavelength. What wavelength? This is the wavelength of the emitted photon. So this is the first stage during the study of electron injection efficiency. Now coming to the second stage that now we need to fabricate the same quantum dot onto the surface of the metal oxide semiconductor. For example, the two, or we could use zinc oxide or other metal oxide semiconductor. Now, this is the second set of experiment. So we need to fabricate this quantum dot onto the surface of the L2 and these are the energy levels alignment. The same Procedure, expose them to light with sufficient energy. Electron will be excited to Lumo from Homo in the quantum dots. And this electron, it has two consequences. The first consequence is that this electron, 100% of the, again, 100% of the excited state electron will not be injected. Instead, it will recombine with hole. This is one of the probability. 100% could be recombined. And when it recombines, this is radiative recombination, photon will be generated. And this photon will be detected by the PL and graph will be plotted. And if the intensity of the graph of the quantum dots MOS conjugate is equivalent to the intensity of the graph of the bare quantum dots, it means that no electron is injected. 100% of the electron of the excited state electron here are not uh, will not be injected to MOS if the intensity is the same with the intensity of the pair quantum dots. Uh, this is the first consequence. Second consequence is that this excited state electron, 100%, if this quantum dot could be could generate 100 excited state electron. So if 100% of the electron could be injected. What will happen is that this is not radiative because of the very narrow offset equivalent to none of the photon. So photon will not be generated. When the electron is injected from here to here, 
some energy will be lost and it will not be lost as light or photon because very narrow offset and this one the energy also will be lost during the recombination I mean the, during the first phase this one energy also will be lost but will be lost in terms of photon because very wide offset equivalent this offset is equivalent to visible light that is why we could detect from the PL this wavelength is the wavelength of visible light and this wavelength is not even in the region of visible light very very long uh, wavelength very very small energy gap between these two offset not equivalent to any photon that's why this is radiative this is non radiative non radiative no photon is emitted okay so if 100% of photon is ejected here, what will happen to our PL graph is flat line. No photon is produced. The energy loss is not equivalent to any visible light photon. That's what that's why we got flat line. So if we got flat line which is here is zero, it means that 100% of electron here has been injected to LUMO or production band of metal oxide semiconductor. Understand? Awesome. Now this is how the comparison works. We need to coincide, we need to combine the graph of bare quantum dot and the graph of quantum dot MOS conjugate. Then we measure the intensity. So if this is the bare quantum dots uh, graph and this is equals to zero, it means that the electron will be injected 100% in the quantum dots MOS conjugate. 100% quenching. 100% quenching of graph. This is bare quantum dots, this is quantum dots MOS conjugate, and if this is zero, here, yeah, y axis is zero, it means that 100% of the electron is injected from the quantum dots to MOS. Now let's take a look of the example. It's very hard to get 100% of electron injection. These are some of the experiments that uh, have been made. Uh, where is it? Okay. The first one, the quantum dot MOS conjugate is made using organometallic procedure by uh, within 4 hours this is by SILA CBD direct attachment ligand assisted and ligand assisted but using different ligand uh, how many fabrication technique have we learned a few weeks ago how many fabrication technique we have organometallic SILA CBD direct attachment ligand assisted Five. Why we have two ligand assisted? Because we are using different ligand. The first one is mercaptol propionic acid. The second one is mercaptol succinic acid. So what happened is that using different method, we got different quenching. Sila, only seventy three percent of electron could be injected. CBD fifty three percent. Direct attachment thirty nine. Ligand assisted. Using mercaptol succinic acid, you will get 33%. Mercaptol propionic acid, 90%. No need to memorize all this percentage. Just to show you, different method could produce different uh, percentage of electron injection. The best is this one, the organometallic procedure, which 100%. Uh, this graph is actually, I put the graph wrongly. The graph, the red graph, should be here. This is 100%. This is the best method. However, we got drawback for this case. So, this is the justification of why we we should go for the organometallic procedure in quantum dot solar cell. This is the reason. Same material gives you different electron injection efficiency. So we choose organometallic procedure. Then we go for the fabrication of quantum dot solar cell. 
But the organometric procedure has one issue, which is instability. Instability of quantum dot MOS conjugate. This is freshly fabricated CDSC quantum dots MOS. We got 100% electron injection. 100%. This is what happened after three days exposure to air. You only get 20% of electron injection only after three days of fabrication. So the efficiency has degraded very significantly over time. Within three days from 100% electron injection, the efficiency has degraded, has decreased to only 20%. This is serious. Even though we could get 100% electron injection efficiency during the first day, the freshly baked quantum dot MOS conjugate, but after three days, degraded to 20%. This is not good. So we need new method. We need new method instead of the organometallic process. What are the methods? So many types of methods we are exploring, just like uh, Farha over here. She's exploring thermal evaporator to see whether the electron injection could be maintained over time. So these are the missing links in conclusion. How many missing links? We have six missing links. To obtain high efficiency. Efficiency of what? The photovoltaic conversion from photon to electricity. Six missing links need to be sent. So the first one, which one? For example, more exciton. In order to achieve high photon to electric conversion efficiency, we need more exciton. We need to generate more excited state electron, which will enhance photon absorption. And if we want to use ligand, make sure the ligand is short chain. Why short chain? Shorter wire will uh, means that faster electron injection. And requirements that LUMO of the ligand must be lower than LUMO of quantum dots. The energy level of LUMO must be lower than energy level of quantum dots. What else? Redox potential. The electrolyte. The redox potential of electrolyte should be, the energy level should be higher than the promo of the quantum dots. What else? We need stable, stable electron, stable quantum dots. So we need electron density, uh, the even and uniform electron density, which we have discussed a few weeks ago. What else? Efficient electron injection, the one that we just discussed just now, we need to find a method which could give us very high efficiency of electron injection and maintain a very long time. So from these six missing links, what we could do for the future works that like this, oh, before that, let us see some of the limitations of the quantum dot solar cell. First, definitely electrolyte related issues. Fast evaporation of water ethanol based polysulfide electrolyte. We have two types of very famous electrolyte the polysulfide and iodine based electrolyte. So, in the polysulfide electrolyte, the water and ethanol mixture could evaporate in a very high rate. What else? If we want to use the iodine based Electrolyte, we have the incompatibility issues, just what like we have discussed few weeks ago. What else? Low quantum dot adsorptions onto the MOS, which exposes the MOS to electrolyte. The coverage of the quantum dots onto the surface of TER2 is uneven. Unlike the dye. The dye could absorb and cover the surface of MOS perfectly because they have functional groups. Quantum dots, we don't have any functional groups. So we need to use ligand. But if we want to use ligand, the energy level of the ligand should be studied carefully such that the energy level alignment must be tallied. B, 
limited computational power. In quantum law, Salazar, the quantum law, the chemical structure of the quantum law has not been established. Certain <coughs> experimental effort will give you different structure of the quantum laws, and the structure of the quantum laws is unknown. We need to develop by our own. So if we don't have a powerful computational facility, we won't get the information. For the time being, we only have the office-based PCs, which if we want to run the CDSC 13, we need to spend time about two weeks, non-stop, 24 hours, CDSC 13. For CDSC 26, two months, non-stop, using this spec of computer. Now, we have proposed to the university, university, not faculty, listen, listen. We have proposed to the university, they won't buy. So these are the limitations. We need computational facility if you want to excel at anything. And I believe using the computational facility and the tools that we have, we could join any research activity that we want. Anything under the sun, everything under the sun, if we have the passion. So for the time being, I'm using all the computational facility for the quantum of source for the solar cell, for the photovoltaic activity, and plus we have one more uh, research activity that we want to join, which is the aromatherapy. Uh, I have started simulated some of the essential oil structure and giving good results. But if we have very powerful computer, we could uh, make the simulation quicker. From few months become few hours or few minutes. So these are uh, future prospects which Farha is doing. We could start to look at the lead cathogenides. Why? The first one because small band gap. Why small band gap? Low threshold energy exciton transition. Which I believe I have explained to you during the, the first week of lecture. Low threshold energy for electron transition. The first extonic peak should be at longer wavelength. Possibly if in the region of near infrared or infrared. So it will give us larger absorption cross section. Number two, why lead chakogenide? It has large exciton wall radius, approximately 12 nanometer. Why? Because any material any cluster of material which is lower than the exciton borders is considered as quantum confined structures. And why do we need to look at the quantum confined structures? Because only quantum confined structure could present the multi exciton generation. Why multi exciton generation? Because upon absorption of one, of one photon, we could get many exciton. And many exciton means <coughs> higher ISC or short circuit current. So what can we do? Now we could try bulk heterojunction like chakogenide quantum dots uh, to prevent exposure to air, to extract lumos simultaneously throughout the structure. So we mix the PBSE, PBS, PBTE using uh, materials which only could permit electron to flow out at this way. And this material over here only permits hole to flow out from this way. Remember the photovoltaic principle, we need to separate the excited state electron with hole by any technique that you could you could do. So this is one of the technique about intro junction. Top layer only extract electron. Bottom layer only could extract hole. Then separation, we could get a separation of the charge carrier. This one could work. Or we could do MOS to the structure of lead chakogenide. This is the lead chakogenide. And we have whole transport layer over here. Instead of using electrolyte. Whole transport layer meaning that only whole could be channeled out. And the metal oxide semiconductor, the function of the MOS is to extract only electron out. Also, separation of exciton and hole. Uh, sorry, excited state electron and hole. These are two types of um, 
device structure that we can do. For the time being, Farah is focusing on this one. But she might change uh, the device structure as well. This is just one of the suggestions. That is all for quantum dot solar cell. Uh, these are additional. What are quantum dots? They what they could offer. Quantum dots are nano crystals of semiconductors with size less than external borders. Everybody knows about this. So they offer size dependent optoelectronic properties, photons attacks, tunable emitters, and absorbers in optoelectronic devices, which is not related to us. We are looking quantum dots in the angle of photovoltaic. So different size of the same material, different size of the same material, they will give us different electronic properties which could be observed in the absorbent spectra, absorption spectra. This is from the PL spectra. Different size of quantum dots, even though the material is the same, they will give us different peaks. Means that the electronic structure is different. The way they behave with elect uh, with light will be different by tuning the size. This is the mechanism of multi exciton generation. Just a quick uh, recap. I have explained this a few weeks ago. So, this is the bulk material. This is the quantum dots material. Semiconducting quantum dot able to produce more than one exciton upon the absorption of a phonon with energy greater than Vega. This is the energy. Uh, sorry, this is the quantum dots. And this is the mechanism of energy. Okay. Employment of quantum dot solar cell theoretically increase the maximum efficiency of over 60%. So we need this mechanism instead of this one. This one only could produce one exciton upon absorption of one photon, this one. And this one we could produce more than two, if possible, upon absorption of one photon. The rest, uh, this is just addition, additional info on how to simulate the quantum dots. I believe if you already took Advanced material lab, you have done this before, but smaller crystal structure, right? So these are the procedures, and we could also um, produce the theoretical absorption spectra, this one, and compare with the experimental absorption spectra. And if they are telling, then the structure is realistic. Ah, uh, we won't go through this Schrodinger equation. But if you want to, if you're hungry for the additional information, this is the calculations behind the calculation made by the computer. We need to solve the Schrodinger equation. To find the lowest energy structure, the lowest energy structure means that the realistic, the realisticness of the structure. We could simulate anything. But the question is, is your simulation realistic? Is the simulation give you realistic results which is exist in real world? So we need to solve this strategy. Question to find the lowest energy structure, the structure which has the lowest energy. So what do we calculate? The interaction between the nucleus, which is consists of proton and neutron, the electrons. The kinetic energy of electrons, electrons are moving, right? So it has kinetic energy. Nucleus, if we compare nucleus with the electron, it seems like the nucleus is not moving because the electron moves fast. We only could see electrons and we don't see the nucleus is moving, but actually they are moving as well. The potential energy between what? The potential energy between the neutron and neutron? Potential energy between the electron and neutron. Potential energy between the electron and electron. <coughs> Each and every subatomic particle need to be calculated. That is why the calculation uh, takes very long time. Few days, few hours, few months. And this is modern 
type of calculations we include two extra sorry how many one extra parameter which is exc exchange and correlation <coughs> we know that in pauli principle the electron cannot be at the same spot with the same state am i correct that is pauli exclusional principle kan pauli kan electron they have two, two speeds one speed up one speed down let's say the electron is total like this one speed up one speed down so they could exchange position during the position exchange the energy will be changed and we need to calculate that energy of exchange they exchange in two ways one is like this they just exchange position the other one is that like this they change position and change their spin so if they change their spin the energy will be changed as well so we need to calculate the energy of correlation in combination we need to calculate the energy of exchange and correlation this is modern type of dft the one that we are using in this computer we could calculate by our own but it involves few hundred thousands of calculations kalau tahan rasa tak tidur tak makan sila so we give the task to computer ipt with this computer we are doing rocket science but we are using excel based computer sometimes if you want to key in excel also this computer will be hang so there is our trouble bottom line the dft the density functional theory calculations to simulate the chemical structure of any materials we need to calculate the total ground state energy the lowest total ground state energy we need to find that all the calculation that i have mentioned briefly just now all these jungles and all that what we need is that to get the structure which has the lowest ground state energy which means that we need to simulate a realistic chemical structure why realistic because we want to use the result for our study it must be realistic or else our research will be meaningless we are simulating non realistic structure meaningless throw up into the dustbin we need simulate something which is realistic well this one no need we could calculate the electron redox potential as well but i won't include this in our syllabus these are the procedures uh, developed by fis group the rest are just additional info this one i have public i have uh, discussed before discussed before already discussed before that's it